Jason Hope, drummer for Vegas-based rock band Velvet Chains, joins us in the studio. We'll discuss his start in drumming, the evolution of the band, and their upcoming South American tour. We'll also find out what's in store for the future. We'll close the episode with a live video of their original hit, Back on the Train, on this episode of Vegas Rocks, the podcast. Today's episode is sponsored by Vegas Printing, Graphic Design, Small and Large Format Printing, Direct Mail Services, Web Design, and more. Whether you're holding an open house, need supplies for your trade show booth, or opening a new business, Vegas Printing is your source for all your printing needs. Visit VegasPrinting.com today. Hi, this is Sherry and Adam. Hey. Welcome to Vegas Rocks, the podcast. We're here with Jason Hope, drummer from Velvet Chains. What's up, guys? Hey. Welcome. Thanks for coming. Thanks for taking time out of your Thanks very for... busy month. Thanks for having me. I understand you're from <clears throat> Chicago. Originally. And what, what brought you to Vegas? Um, I had a buddy who moved out here, and oh. I took him to the airport, and he, I thought he was coming for just a little vacation. He called me up like two weeks later. He's like, dude, can you sell my truck? I'm staying here. <laughs> and then he kept like, oh man, you got to come out. You got to come out here. And, uh, and I, w- I was in college at the time. I was like, yeah, man, as soon as I, as soon as I finish this, you know, I'll head out there. And so I got out of college and came out thinking I was signing a six month lease on an apartment. And <laughs> you haven't left. Here I am, you know, 18 years later. And yeah. is your friend still here too? No. Wow. It, uh, Maybe? <laughs> no, he, he's been in and out, in and cool. out. Cool. And so were you, have you been playing drums all your whole entire life? No. When did you start? When I was 13. Okay, self-taught? Mm, not really. I had about six, month, six months of private lessons. And, you know, and then we just couldn't afford it anymore. So I took what, you know, I took what my teacher told me and he goes, playing drums is easy. There's straight time and there's triplet time. And, you know, Hmm. so yeah, pretty much, um, you know, just got the basics and yeah. Do you think the lessons helped? And I asked because (laughs) she got me a drum set. (laughs) I had no direction. I started when I was 11 in sixth grade. Um, no direction because my buddy and I, during lunch, we'd go into the music room and play the drum set. But other than that, the only direction we ever got was like marching band stuff on a snare, you know, practice pad. Yeah. So now, you know, I, I can hear what I'm supposed to be playing, but I, you know, I don't know. So he's the wondering, should he take lessons? <laughs> yeah, should I take lessons or should I just wing it? Because basically what I do, I watch video on YouTube and I try and play what they're playing. Yeah. Um, at this point, I don't think there's much hope for you. No. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Listen, no. if you heard him play, I would probably agree with you. Hey, I got ACDC back in black down, man. <laughs> yeah, think, over and over and over I think you just again. need to be directed somewhere. Yeah. You yeah. know, that's it. Just a little bit of direction. I'm, I'm a huge fan of taking lessons. I also, I give lessons too, so... Um, it, but in short, in short bursts, and I hope none of my students are watching this, but <laughs> you know, I mean, I can show you something and then it's, it's up to you to, to, to Implement. do it, you yeah. know, yeah. but if you weekly, 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 and my teaching philosophy is like, just, I need to move the ball forward a couple of yards at a time, you know, That's what, good. whatever. So I'm constantly giving them new stuff and they're constantly struggling. And then sometimes I'm like, are my students not progressing? And then I'll see them play, and I'm like, "How do you? How can you do that? You know?" And because every time I see them, I'm giving them something new that they're struggling with. And then once I see them like actually play or perform, then I'm like, "Oh, oh okay, this is you working." You taught them something. Yeah, I'll I'll <laughs> go and I'll try to find teachers myself. I do a lot of the YouTube stuff, but nowadays it's it's information overload. Yeah, I'll sit there and I'll watch a YouTube video. I'm like, "Oh my God, that's awesome!" Next video, "Oh my God, yeah." And, you know, two hours later, I haven't practiced shit. Yeah. No. <laughs> you know? I was going to ask you that. Do you, do you still practice? I've, I've never, like, actually practiced, believe it or not. Yeah. You're not I've, the first drummer to tell us that. I've, it totally surprises us because yeah. I think, how do you know? I've always like, been in a band. Like, so when I was 13, I joined my first band, 
And it was, I was just talking shit with this guy at school. We were in seventh grade or something, seventh or eighth grade. And he was like, yeah, I got a band. I was like, yeah, oh, I played drums, which meant I had a drum set in my basement <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that I never played. He's like, yeah, we should get together and jam. And I was like, all right, yeah, let's do it. And I showed up and everyone was about the same level. You know, it was just straight noise. Yeah. <laughs> but I stuck, you know, noise, I I stuck with that band. We ended up kicking that guy out like instantly. <laughs> but um, yeah, and then ever since that day, my, my drum set was at my guitar player's house because that's where we rehearsed. So I never like spent the time just like shedding through stuff. It was always just like band practice you know oh, yeah. every every day Everything so was enough practice maybe. yeah and anything i would need to work out i'd kind of have to do in my head or there and it yeah. just kind of so what's the process you get a new song you've never played what's your process just for for what project <laughs> i just say it's a cover okay that you've never done and you got to perform it like with your you know with velvet chains if you okay well, well with velvet chains that's it's a lot we normally do a lot shorter of sets so that I'll probably just like listen to it a little bit and just show up and play it yeah but yeah, it, some it, other gigs it. I'll I'll actually like chart them out like okay. if I get a call like hey my drummer's sick can you do this and that's another one of my things is I can never say no you know so it's like yeah 71 songs Three days? Okay. Yeah, let's do it. That's so cool. then I'll like just listen to the song and then like, chart it out. And because um, it, it really takes about 20 minutes to learn a song. Okay, you got to listen to it and then you got to like kind of like make some notes or chart it out if you, you know, just basically kind of the roadmap. Like, is there any yeah. stops? Is there any big signature fills? So, you know, is there any verses that might run long or, you know, is there two choruses at the end? Because when you're playing it, you're just like thinking, okay, here's the song. And then you forget like it's a double chorus, you know, yeah. and you're like, so if you just have that noted down. Then you're like, okay, I'm, you know, verse two, I got to stop to ready. Go. Uh -huh. You know, something then, like that. And, and those are, I've, I've noticed too with uh, drummers like yourself, you can kind of fake the fills and a lot of people don't pick that up. Yeah, no, it's because I I explained we were watching. What, what do you mean by fake a fill? We were watching. Do you mean like improvise in between? Improvise, okay. yeah. You know, and I told you we were watching. Um, I don't want to name bands. Yeah, don't say anything bad. <laughs> we were watching a band. Yes, and I recall I, you saying that. And I, you know, I told you I said, oh yeah, that's not the right fill, but she couldn't tell. No. You know, I I remember you know what I was hearing, but. Yeah, I I was yeah that that guy's a great drummer too, mm -hmm. and it was probably one of those things where. He'd probably just listen to the song. I've heard it enough to do it, you know. Yeah. And it's unless it's like a real signature part, you know, like if you're playing, you know, a Phil Collins tune and you don't do that, <laughs> really, you know, yeah. da, 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 da. <laughs> you're like, no, nope, mm -hmm. it's not gonna work. Yeah, everyone's gonna be like, what, what? the hell? <laughs> but if it's just, you know, the run of the mill, you know, yeah. Phil or whatever, yeah. And a lot of guitar players do that with solos too. There's, you know, a, a, but then there's solos that you can't just like bootleg, mm -mm. you know, because <laughs> everyone in the world will notice. But if, if it's, it's, yeah, if it's, uh, what is it? Uh, what's every person that plays guitar? Sweet Child of Mine? <laughs> uh, no, Van Halen Evolution? No. Okay, yeah. Evolution? The, um, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Come on, guys. <laughs> How come I can't think of that? <laughs> this revolution you can't think of it either van halen if, holy i know i know what it is what is it i'm not saying <laughs> <He doesn't know laughs> either. <Ain't not. laughs> it's, it's gonna come to me every single guitarist has to play that <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you, if you if somebody fakes it everyone's gonna know yep yeah if they don't know it 100 percent for sure Especially if it's a cover. It's eruption, isn't it? Eruption. eruption. Thanks. I did know it. I was, Thank you. I was just testing you guys. Listen, we're a little older, so it happens. Yeah, just but you wait. We should know it. Yeah, that's you your generation. You were closer to that age. No, we're, we forget. <laughs> oh, okay. Part timers. <laughs> so once you got to Vegas, did you were you playing in a band right away here? No, or did I you... retired from music then. Yeah, and so and now you're just. I got a job for six months. <laughs> well, what? How long? <laughs> I before, did. <laughs> before you moved, were you still playing up until the time you moved? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Same band? 
Um, I mean, shuffle the members around, I heard you say. No, I was in a band in Chicago called Neo Tribe from 2000, actually like 99 until like the, just the wheels fell off in <laughs> 2003. And I moved out here in 04, like right at the end of 04. Okay. And uh, so I did a, like a, just a lot of sub work. But yeah, I would still do the like the cover band on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, so I, I still had that going on and then I was kind of started another band. But yeah, I played up until up until I left and then I was like, I was done. Hmm. I was going to get a job. You I, really did stop playing for a while? I mean, not like... You just weren't I, hustling I, as hard as you could I have. just got out of college and it was time to get a real job. What did you go to college for? Uh, human resource management. Oh my. <laughs> oh, you moved wow. to the, you moved to a good city for that. <laughs> yeah. And that was my first job. I worked for like six months and I and that was couldn't it? stand it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. So then all of a sudden you were discovered by Velvet Chains. How did that come about? <clears throat> discovered by Velvet Chains. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I um I knew uh, Nils. I'm imagining Neil saw you across a crowded room <laughs> with your glowing blonde hair. No, I, I met Nils about five years ago. And I was doing, um, I was in a working band and he was doing, um, he was doing like a kind of a tribute, um, like a Stone Temple Pilots tribute. Oh, okay. And um, the guitar player that he found knew me, so he called me and I showed up. And, you know, we would get together and, you know, and jam and have a great time. And uh, they were, um, it, it, was, it was a startup project, which those are always weird because you kind of have to, you know. Get the feel for it everyone. Take some shitty gigs, you know, just to, you mm -hmm. know, get a gig um, under your belt. And I was, you know, I was working every weekend and this and that. So when they would offer me a gig, you know, with Nils, I would, you know, I'd be like, I, I got this other thing going on. So it just, it wasn't a good fit at the time, yeah. you know, so I just kind of bowed out. Um, but we remained friends. I mean, not like we talk to each other all the time, but, you know, we catch up every once mm -hmm. and again. And uh, and for those that don't know, Niels is the bass, the bass player, player of Velvet, Velvet Chains. Chains. Yeah, and he's kind of the founder of it, you know. Right. The old man of the band. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And the rest of the band is. Go ahead. Larry. It's it's pronounced Lahi. Lahi and Laurent. Lohan. Lohan. Whew. Lahi and Lohan. They're French. Are they? I didn't know that. No. They're but not. they're French names, I think. Oh. <laughs> Are they twins or just brothers? They're brothers. They're brothers. brothers. They're not twins. Yeah, they're not same age. Brothers. And Ro Viper Ro is Viper. your lead singer. And yep. where are they all from? Are they from the same? No. Country? Okay. No. Where are they from? Um, the brothers are from Brazil. Okay. And um, Nils and um, Ro are from Chile. Oh, okay. I didn't know Nils was so, from Chile. Yep. Um, and is it true, is this, is this true, <laughs> that that they found Ro, or you guys found Ro on Craigslist? No. Or he found you guys on Craigslist? Is no. that true? No, okay. that's, that's not true. <laughs> Behind the music. No that, yeah. that's, that's not true. Um, it was Instagram because it's, ah. you know, it was 2022. Yeah, so that Craigslist. makes sense. <laughs> no, it was, um, <laughs> yeah, N Nils came across the, a video of somebody singing and it was like, and that was right at the time that I came in and we were looking for a singer and he's like, hey, I found this, I found this guy, you know, and he sent me, I sent, he sent me like a clip and I was like, yeah, that guy's good. And he's like, I hit him up and uh, we arranged for him to come out to audition and everything worked. And now he and I are besties. Wow. We do everything together. That's cool. Awesome. Is that, <laughs> see, I don't know if you're this or not. No, I'm okay. being serious. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So, um. One of the things that I wanted to talk to you about was, well, you guys put out an album of six songs? Yeah. Right? It was an EP. An e what's, EP. What does EP Extended mean? Extended play. play. What, what makes it an EP? 
that it's not a full length. Only There's so? some rules to okay. it, like how how many Did, like how many minutes the whole thing is. Okay. But yeah, we we were planning on a full album, and we had a bunch of songs demoed, and, and we kind of decided we need to put something out, and should we wait for you know for a full length? And we just decided, hey, let's just go with the best six songs that we had. And, you know, I mean, the, you got to work through a lot of that stuff. And, yeah. you know, we, we, did, we just didn't want to, I think we felt the need to get something out so we can, you know, start playing. Because right. when you're playing live shows, it's hard for people to, like, dig the stuff if they've never heard it. If yeah. it's the first time, they can't, like, oh, let's start that one again. Right. No. Yeah, because usually they hear it first, and that's why, that's why they you want to go see you yeah. live. You know? Yeah. 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 Um, so the videos are amazing. Are they shot here in town? Mm, two of them were. Two of them were? Yeah. The, we worked with um, Brian Cox, uh, was the director for uh, Last Drop, and we shot that one in town. Um, where were we? Just some sound sound stage for most of the stuff. If you can't tell, they're not really driving that car. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, and then there was, there was this little place... Um, it, it was super cool. It kind of looked like a hotel, but there were many different rooms in it that all had kind of like a different... Uh, setting. Yeah, a different setting. I mean, none of it, like, you know, everything's so closely shot that you couldn't really see the whole yeah. thing. But, like, we were all walked in, and we were like, wow, this is, cool. this is cool. So we shot that one here, and then we did um, uh, Back on the Train. We went to... Uh, Hollywood to shoot that one and we did that one with Dean Carr okay. and Dean's worked with everybody he's kind of that like 90s he did a lot of Marilyn Manson stuff if you look at okay. his list he's done quite like, a bit huh? with everybody because the videos are a little bit um I mean they're super artistic and creative but they're a little dark or edgy or yeah I don't know how would you would you is that how you would describe it yeah, I could see with the with the Dean Carr one because yeah. nobody had an idea for that video, and I was like, "Yeah, that's that's, that's what I don't know. How do you come up with the concept yeah. of who? You know, who? I, I, I'm not a filmmaker, so I <laughs> no. don't know that stuff. You know, I'm used to live events, but yeah. how do people create those types of things? I'll tell you a secret. I don't know either because no? I'm not a filmmaker. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know. I'll, I'll throw in my two cents when I think I can add any value, yeah. but yeah. if if I don't have an idea, I tend to just like just do just yeah. stay in my lane, you know. Yeah. Like if I'm not helping the situation, then you know that makes sense. So yeah, with that one, they're like, oh, we need some ideas, we need some ideas, and I was just like, let let's Dean just go crazy, you know, and it paid so that's, off. Yeah, man. that's what happened. So, so yeah. <laughs> two people are. <laughs> You know, feasting on on row at the end of the video. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that that one was a lot of fun to shoot. And I then, bet. Um, what's the third one? Um, Can't win. Yeah. Can't win was shot here in town. I the... think that's my favorite song. You think I so? Know. Yeah, I think so. Okay, and then I guess <laughs> I'm supposed to say that or not? But <laughs> yeah, I guess Brian and Road like drove like way out to the desert for some of those desert yes. scenes, and I was like. There's probably a spot probably you could have like, done like yeah. 20 minutes out of town. They, they could went have just like went to Henderson hours. or Gene. Gene. <laughs> yeah, and then the um, the drone shot where he's like floating in the pool. Yes. Um, yeah, I was I was kind of happy that if you know the video, you know he keep we keep giving him the dice and he keeps rolling them yes. and then getting in a in a bad situation and. Uh, yeah, I think when I gave him the dice, that's when he wound up in the pool. So I was kind of like, I was like, awesome. And that was just like the luck of the draw. I don't think there was any rhyme or reason, reason to that. To it. And you guys won an award for one of your videos. We did, yeah. We won the uh, Santiago Horror Film Festival. That's like, crazy. Let's picture. Um, we just won another award for. It wasn't like the gold medal, it was the silver medal, but uh, <laughs> for um, uh, Last Drop. We have cool. Last Drop entered in, I think, four different uh, four different festivals, so 
Cool. Um, some of them have, haven't happened yet. That's really cool. And so taking that, like taking the, the um, direction, I guess, of the videos go and coupling that with your album artwork, who is, it, it, that artist is mind blowing. That, I have his name written somewhere in my notes, but I told you I probably wouldn't be able to find things. Timothy Lenore. Sounds about right. It's good. His work is gorgeous. So is there, was there sort of like a, a concept that you guys wanted to, to go with everything in, um, in lines of like making it, I don't know, a little bit, uh, scary, a little bit <laughs> like, I mean, you want a horror, a horror award. <laughs> no, was yeah, that, was that, that intentional? Was, I guess. I, I, that wasn't intentional. Um, I don't know how how we even entered that one, but um, I think the the skulls um, for I think what is that can't win mm -hmm. where we're all we're all skulls and yeah. that was um, I I don't even know where that came from yeah like it wasn't because it, it doesn't quite match everything. You know, kind of the the nature of the songs and you know what they're about, but um, but it, it, the 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 cover of um, Morbid Dreams, the EP. Yes, I I like I think that fits perfectly with it. And Morbid Dreams is it's a nod to um, like what we what we're doing. Like we put everything else on hold you know, to follow these kind of like morbid dreams mm -hmm. that we have, mm. you know, and that's, that's where that came from. It's not like our songs are so scary. They're going to give you, you know, yeah. crazy yeah. dreams. It was, <laughs> it's kind of like when you, you know, almost neglect everything else in your life to focus on one thing, Yeah. you know. And, and there's that ju juxtaposition, is that the right word, with like morbid and dreams, velvet and chains, you know, and how, it's it's edgy, but it's still, I don't know, it still has like a good, I mean, you guys are all such nice people. And <laughs> it's hard <laughs> right? to think like of it's you hard, yeah, scary. It's a, you know, yeah, like, so you've got like that kind of that, I know, I know I've heard you refer to some of the rock and roll you guys do as dirty, <laughs> but that edgy vibe too, you know what I mean? Does that make any sense? Yeah, I mean, I that's a bit of a goal. I want to bring a little dirt back into rock and roll. I love it, that. It seems like it's gotten a little clean, you know, Yeah. over time. The commercial commercialization, I think, is what ruined it, a lot of it. Yeah, and I mean, I get it. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of catchy stuff, you know, that's, that's out now. And, and I mean, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. But if you can have just like... Take it where it's nice and pretty and just kind of like rub yeah. a little dirt on it. Yeah. You know, that's, yeah. that's kind of what. Kind of just give it that little bit of an edgy vibe. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we like. <laughs> so you joined um, Velvet Chains at a really great time, 2022? Um, it was, yeah, I was talking. I, I jammed with them when Nils called me. Um, he just kind of called me out of the blue. And I said, I'll tell you what, man, put me down for whatever shows you have. You know, I'll definitely do that. And then we'll just talk about, you know, you know, what you need, what you're looking for with this project. Because I, you know, I knew of Velvet Chains before I was in the band. Mm -hmm. I would go and see them and stuff like that. And I wasn't quite sure if that's what, you know, I wanted to do. But then after talking with him and his vision of where he wanted to go, I was like, yeah, sign me oh, up. Yeah. What was the first gig you played with them? It was the barbershop. It was, oh. um, it was a battle of the bands. And not a lot of people know this, but I do have a personal record of five and seven in battle of the bands. Mm. So I'm not quite at 500. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and we, with that battle of the bands, you won. No, we lost that one. Uh, come on. <laughs> we did. We won the first night. Um, we won the first night. Wait, how many nights was it? Well, it's a battle was of the like bands. A, well, I don't know what it is. Is it like weeks after weeks? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So here, but the only real lo loser in a battle of the bands is the audience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, well, uh, the way of the Battle of the Bands works is you have four bands one night, four bands the next night, four bands. All and, different. Uh, yeah. Okay. You, so each okay. week, like every f Saturday, you'll have four bands and one of them wins. And then the next week, one of them wins. Okay. And the next week, four bands, one of them wins. Then and then they come back. The, then you have the, playoffs. Then they, yeah, and then okay. they go to the... The, the final <laughs> and it's the, the four the bands that won and then one of them wins. Okay. Okay. Um, now, different genre of bands or is it all rock? No, that that one was all different genres because I I really think that the barbershop was just kind of holding auditions for um, for a, a residency. residency there. You know, yeah. like what's going to work best with the room. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the first time we won that night. And then we lost in the final. And then okay. they called us to um, they called us for the next year, and okay. we we did that one, and that's when we won. Okay. So the first time we didn't even have Roe singing, we had um, we had a, a hired gun, and I was I was still kind of a hired gun at, at that time. That time. Yeah. Hmm. Cool. So we were like, but here the funny thing about it is, even though we lost that first one. The guy we had singing with us, he plays up there like three nights a week for the last like, <laughs> two year and a half, two years. So he really won. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I mean, he's really good, though. He's kind of a jack of all trades. Plays Sweet. guitar, sings, does everything, you know, knows 700 songs. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Oh, God. See, I didn't know that you guys had done it before. Yeah, I, I thought even... it was just this current residency that you guys were doing. Oh, is, that, yeah. is that what you want? Okay. Yeah. It was it was really like a rocky comeback story. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so just in the last year, you guys have opened for LA Guns, mm -hmm. Todd Kearns. Yep. Um Guns N' Roses Gilby. Gilby. Yeah, Gilby, Gilby Clark. Clark. Um, you played at Vamped several times. Yep. You did the residency at the barbershop. You guys did the Viper Room. Very cool. Yeah. And Rockfest. Rockfest. What's coming up? Well, we did Blue Ridge Rockfest too. Okay, so we are going, um, we're doing a South American tour. That's what's coming up. So we got a couple of festivals, I think. Toward the end of April? Yeah. Right? Okay. I believe so. And um, who else is going to be there? Who are you opening for? Um, Stone Temple Pilots on one of them. That's pretty crazy. Which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, big fans of those guys. And then the Winery Dogs. And we're playing a festival, I think it's called um, Summer Breeze. Okay. Um, that it, there's a lot of like metal bands and stuff. But I think I saw like other like names like Skid Row and stuff like that I I believe but you know with those festival flyers yeah. it's yeah. like whoa there's, there's so many 50 bands. bands on there yeah, yeah. but and some are really big and then they get tiny and then there's a big one and then yeah. they're really tiny exactly <laughs> so we're we're actually um, yeah we're gearing up I think we we're going out for 12 days or something and we have seven seven dates which wow. is and That's all over, lot. so it's Brazil and Chile, and we got something. I was kind of hoping, um, I haven't seen my the itinerary yet, but it just like knowing what we have, I don't know that there's going to be a day off. It's yeah, going to be like a downtime. gig travel day, you know, and so I don't know how much sightseeing I'm going to be able to do. Hopefully you get some in. <laughs> a little bit, and yeah. And opening for Stone Temple Pilots, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I want to say we're playing with them twice. Nice. I think so. Hmm. Like I said they awesome. don't tell me much. No. <laughs> they just say show up. That's okay, so right. now that we have you here, we're gonna fire some little questions at you. Okay. What's your favorite song to play live as a cover? Oh, uh, my favorite cover song to play? Yeah. Does it have to be one I do with Velvet Chains? No. No. <sighs> Please say Taylor Swift. Just kidding. <laughs> I don't hate those songs. I bet you don't. <laughs> no. I, I love that gig, actually. Um, let me see. My favorite one to play live? That's really hard. Um, like, is there a certain... So you said, does it have to be with Velvet Chain? So is there a certain um, genre that you... 
Like, well, I just do, did that Elvis gig, and that was a lot of fun. Nice. I love doing that yeah. stuff. That's oh cool. yeah. <laughs> the guy who did Elvis was so funny. He had like, because we didn't rehearse the show. Like we barely rehearsed the songs, and he was like, he was like, uh, do we need to do this one? No, no. Just at the end of it, I'll, I'll, I'll just watch me. I'll cue you. You know, I'll give you a couple of these, and I'll give you some of these. <laughs> oh my goodness. And, you know, and. So, <laughs> So I'm like, okay, what does any of that mean? You yeah. know, he goes, I'll give you a couple of machine guns. So just give me a fill right there. And uh, no, but that guy was hilarious. He would say things in between in between songs, and it wouldn't catch me until I had started the next song, and then I would start like laughing to where I was like gonna mess up. <laughs> oh no! So that that was a lot of fun. But my favorite, yeah, I I couldn't I couldn't say. Or top ten, or one that's in the top ten. I can't even remember what. Do you, is there from. like one from Velvet Chains that you love particularly? Um, Velvet Chains like original song. Yeah. Yeah, I would probably say "Back on the Train" is my favorite to play. That's. Nice. Did you did you have a hand in writing that one? I did. Okay. Yeah. Did you write any other ones? Um, I had a hand in. Um, what was it? Fade Away. Okay. And um, and some of the new stuff that we have coming out. Fun. And you guys are going to be doing some re-recording, or you did some re-recording? We did do some re-recording. Some stuff off the Icarus album? Yeah. Okay. Just to um, to get a uh, row on, on those recordings. Awesome. So vocals. that's all. We just re-recorded the vocals. Great. So yeah, we went to L.A. and we worked with a guy named uh, Jim Kaufman with that. And we also worked with him on an upcoming release. Um, so, great guy to work with. Hmm. Real easy to work with. Because a lot of people don't know, sometimes the studio gets really like stressful. Yeah. You know, because you got everyone, there. everyone's got the same mission to make the song the best, but not everybody sees eye to eye. Oh, yeah. Not everybody's path to that mission is the same, right? <clears throat> well, and everyone has a, you know, a different, a, vision. a different vision and everyone has what they think is the best idea for it. The only problem is, is just trying out everybody's idea, can, you know, takes a lot of time mm -hmm. and time's money. But isn't that where a, a good producer kind of helps out? Yeah, you know? exactly. And that's why... You know, but the producer comes in and he's kind of, uh, you know, I mean, he's got his ideas too. Yeah. And, you know, being the, you know, being one of the creative artists, you know, you have your vision. And like I said, a lot of times I'll just kind of sit back unless I really can't stand something. <laughs> and then I'll, you know, then I'll pipe up. Who's the most even keeled person in your band? Me. Hmm. I'm super chill. Yeah. I even tied a bandana around my dog's neck earlier today. That's, that's how chill I am. Yeah. Pretty freaking chill. <laughs> yeah. Like that's like chill factor. <laughs> Super high. <laughs> Who's the best dresser in your band? Um, Ro. Oh yeah, I'd have to agree. <laughs> yeah. Who's the baby of the band? <laughs> the, like, what do you mean? Well, who do you have to take care of the most? <laughs> I'm not going to say that. Nobody. <laughs> I'm not, not going <laughs> to. I mean, we, we, we all help each other That's out. That's good. It's, yeah, it's like being in a relationship with, you know, yeah. four other people. And there's good days and there's bad days, you know. But, I mean, we are, at the end of the day, we're all really good friends. And we're all, you know, all have each other's backs. And you guys are having a good time. Trying to. That's good. Yeah, that's that's the name of the game. If I wasn't having fun, I'd be doing something else. <laughs> exactly. Working in <laughs> HR somewhere. Yeah, yeah. wow. We, maybe you should come back and you can tell us all about that sometime. <laughs> There's not much to tell. <laughs> Jason, thank you so much for joining us. That was great to have you. We wish you the best of luck on your tour. Right. Thank you. Yeah. That's it. That's it. We'll... Yeah. we'll Put all this stuff in the socials. You say it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll link to all the social media um, down in the description of this video. And until next time, we'll see you guys later. And stay tuned awesome. for a video shot of one of Velvet Chain's originals. Thanks.
Vegas Rocks the Podcast is hosted by Adam and Sherry Martin Del Campo. This has been a Total Design Studios LLC production.